and do what they have to do to to scientifically um, understand the, the heart. And the day before, I guess I was in a class of naturopathy, Ayurveda, and the teacher said that the scientific found some production of immunity in the heart. <laughs> so that girl that was uh, microcephalic <laughs> knew a lot already about that. And she said, we don't have time for to wait for the science to prove the facilitated communication. We need to communicate now. We need to pass our messages. We need exchanges. We have no time to wait for you and for your prehistoric science. A lot of them say that. And a lot of them also say, without knowing each other, but somehow they can be connected, they say that we are not the handicapped. You are the handicapped because you are handicapped from the heart. <laughs> so with that method, they can share their dreams. They can uh, share their desire, their fears, their needs. They can go into deep discussions about art, culture, life about their intimacy also, about love. And um, I want to share with you some of their dreams. There was a man living in England. His name was Larry. And he kept saying, he kept singing, Larry lives in the cottage, Larry lives in the cottage, Larry lives in the cottage, going, walking and singing that. So no one understood why. And no one um, pay attention to that until the day he wrote clearly in facilitated communication on the keyboard that he wanted to live in Ireland. So um, his uh, team of helpers and family went with him to Ireland and they found him an apartment and since then he's living there. <laughs> And uh, he's happy to go to church every Sunday. Everybody knows that he's uh, autistic. And uh, I remember that uh, when he leaves the church, he just goes in the middle of the mass and he said, Auf Wiedersehen <laughs> to everybody. So they can teach us also about freedom because sometimes we don't dare to do things and they can be some models also because finally they go back to the essential. So they have nothing to lose. They went through a lot. Um, I have another quotation. So um, it's a quotation from Caroline who wrote the book From My Heart to Your Heart. And her dream was to go to Berlin and she just did last week with her sister. And she went with the wheelchair. She went with her facilitators. She's lucky because she has six facilitators. And her dream was to live in her own flat. She's living with a baker that uh, works at night. And uh, the facilitators sleep with her. There is always someone sleeping there in case. And she wrote in her book, did you ever wonder why I choose the handicap to grow up faster in this life and to give the possibility to those around me to evolve faster too? And she adds further, I know I'm an idealistic. With everything I went through, I know that every human can go beyond his limitations if he is welcomed as he is by another human. I want to add a, a quotation about Larry that is living now in Ireland. He wrote, my dream is to live in a place 
welcoming, in a welcoming place, with nice people, a lot to see and do, and change and contribute in many ways. Stay a man of the family and continue to be better and better than best. <laughs> so the grammar is not uh, always uh, perfect, as you see, but it's, uh, it's poetic. Um, there was a congress in uh, Germany, in Heidelberg, a few, few years ago, a congress where autistic persons and speechless persons were on the stage, and they were the only one to, to, to express themselves. They were the only voiceless speakers. They were doing the conference. And they were answering each other. And it was really beautiful. Okay. I'm done, I guess. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Now, I would like to invite uh, Susan Joy. Please, ma'am. Hello. I just want to say that was beautiful, and that really touched my heart, and it was a great teaching. <laughs> I want to welcome everybody here. I am honored to be speaking at the Women's, at the WEF, and I'm very excited <laughs> and a little nervous. I am. I work with children with autism, sensory processing, dis sensory processing, and uh, developmental delay. And we facilitate communication a little bit differently than with keyboarding. As the children are older, sometimes they go with keyboarding, but we have the children come in. We learn about what their interests are, and advance through the parents or while they're there we set up an environment well I should say I set up an environment that is playful and and inviting and intriguing for the child and I start with connecting with the with the child I get down at their level I make eye contact I follow them around the room I find what they like to play with and it's about connecting and building trust and building a relationship first. And we can do that with all small children as well. <laughs> um, so it, we can do that with our toddlers, with our babies, not just with children that are nonverbal. And it, it's, I'm a little. Um, So you can facilitate communication by getting down on your hands and knees and just imitating what the children is doing, sitting on the floor, rolling with them, being on swings, playing with them, laughing, joking, playing patty, hand games, singing songs with them, um, bringing music into the, into the sessions. Um, how many people out there have no children with a disability? How many people know children or people that are nonverbal? And how many people out there feel that if they're not able to talk, that they don't have the intelligence to communicate? There's a lot of people out there that have a stigma, oh, this person cannot talk, so they might talk about them as if they're a third person. They might talk to their parent instead of saying to the child, hi there, how are you? What's your name? Um, so it's really important to recognize that these people are very smart, and they have feelings, and they are a whole person and they have a lot to contribute. So, excuse me. So, so it's, oh, I think it's, 
So it's, it's very good to engage with a child as from one human being to another, heart to heart. I have one child that I work with, uh, that I worked with for many years that has autism, and he likes to try to get out of doing things. And he will play the, the card, he'll have tantrums and meltdowns, and fortunately he has a mom that's very, very on top of him and knows how smart he is. And it's important to be, we are a good team. We don't let him get out of things. And he's absolutely brilliant, brilliant. And through the years that I've worked with him, it's been amazing to see the connections happen and the aha moments and to see him connect and smile and laugh and make eye contact. Um, it it's brings a lot of joy. I love working with children and helping to make a difference. And, and I love what Emily said, talking about the facilitated communication, how much these people can express themselves. Um, and I, let's see, I'm from the United States. I have a private practice called Just for Kids. And I love what I do. And I'm happy you guys are here. And I hope you take with you um, that when next time you see somebody and they don't talk, you know, get down to their eye level. Maybe they're in a wheelchair, so, you know, get down so you can see eye to eye with them. Ask them a few questions. Give them a compliment. Let them know that they exist. Um, and pass it on to your friends and family. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. <coughs> now we can have a question answer sessions. If you. Thank you. I come from Mexico on the Mexican side of the border, with border with the United States, uh, Arizona, and Sonora. We support the local, two local organizations, grassroots groups of autistic families. Uh, when you live on the border, people who are stuck on the Mexican side are usually the ones who are poorer. Anyone who has the dollars to pay for therapies and stuff on the other side, well, will cross the border. So these groups have made a huge impact in, to the community there. 52 families, 52 recognized families as having an autistic child. Prior to that, adults were tied up at home. They, they knew nothing. And my question goes regarding nutrition. They have made a lot of changes regarding the five no's. Soy, sugar, dairy, wheat, and artificial coloring. And they swear by God that the most of the um, changes they have seen, yes, it's also behavioral therapy as well, but nutrition. I would really like to hear from you, and if I'm allowed to record it and send it right away to them. <laughs> 